Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and this is I Am Loved Church. Good morning. It is kind of nice outside. I mean, there's no wind blowing, and it's snowing. I thought snow was supposed to be over. <sighs> Anyways, I have a really important and good message today. Really good. I, I just couldn't wait. I just had to squeeze it in this week. Usually I'm doing only two sermons. I don't know when I'm going to post this, but I know one thing, that this has God written all over it. As a minister, as a Christian of the faith, uh, believing in the Holy Bible, I'm going to try to make this the best that I can. One thing God revealed to me so clearly and evidently is the need for repentance. And what do I mean by that? Well, I'm just going to give you my personal testimony. When I became a Christian, I loved it at first. And then as I pursued in my faith, I, I noticed something. I started to become really judgmental. Like a lot. I think part of that was just because the grace of God, but then another part was just the rules of God, the laws. And then I realized something. I'm still a sinner. I mean, yes, I make mistakes, but in the eyes of God, I'm still not worthy, and it's by grace that I've been saved. And I just think about that for a second. By grace, like, I can't just earn it in any way. Nothing I do can earn God's mercy besides me believing with the heart of I don't deserve this. And something happens when we become a Christian where we just turn that part off and then we start to believe or think that we can earn it. I don't know, maybe it takes time. Maybe it's something as simple as faith and, and some people can tune it in easier than others. For people like me, I need to reason everything. Within that, I'm just going to talk about um, my sins, basically, for my whole sermon. I wanted to get closer to God, so I wanted to become a pastor. I'm not going to claim I am. I'm not going to claim I'm not. That's up to you guys. I'm just going to claim my desires in that area. Still is. And because I, I thought it was a... It was a way or is a way to get closer to Jesus, get closer, right? To have more knowledge, to have, you know, whatever to my human persona or perception, right? This person must be close to God because they're talking for God, right? Um, as I get closer to God, I start to realize that this world is very accusing. It's even part of our normal life to the point where no one really even notices it anymore. It's like breathing air. It's so natural to who we are. And the Lord has revealed something to me. That's human nature. That's part of the fall of God is to accuse one another for anything. I mean, it's even part of our jokes. Like, I didn't do that to you. You must have did that to yourself. Sarcastic. Sarcasm. 
And I've noticed that these are not the qualities of God. These are the qualities of the world. And I started to think more about, obviously, as you read the Bible more, get closer to Jesus more by reading and praying and seeking and pursuing the Spirit, you start to realize see, and see a huge transparent, trans, um, a huge dividing line, black and white contrast between light and darkness. And then you start to realize this is where God wants us and this is where the world is. By grace, I'm saved, but I'm to act and behave like the child of God that he's making me into from, from the human nature. And I know it sounds accusing still, like you're still pointing fingers. What I'm going to say is, I don't know. I don't really know how to word this, man. I, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to say I'm, I'm still a sinner. I'm still trying my best. I still make mistakes. I think that's one of the biggest things as far as grace is concerned is when I was homeless and my wife took me in, I did everything I could. I deserve everything I did. And that's why I became homeless. I mean, I... And still am a wretch. Just not a good person. I'm not a good person. I mean good things at times, but then when I do good things, I, I, I get mad when people don't do things for me back. So, so still I'm not good when I do good. <laughs> I'm going to jump in a little bit of my past, just a little bit. I don't want to make you feel guilty. I'm not trying to exalt myself, but I'm just going to say that I've done some terrible things in my life, and I didn't want to look at those things in my life. I want to cover up everything that I do is wrong and present a different, you know, present on the surface. But in all actuality, I am broken. I am nasty, vile. I feel dirty inside, you know? So I put up this wall and I think that's what the world does. We put up this wall. If you're, if you've ever been a child in, in elementary school and stuff, kids are mean. I mean, I worked in a elementary school for a little bit. And then I start to look at it and reflect like, yeah, if, if you did something wrong, you got every kid in the class pointing at you, accusing you of your wrong action. Your, you know, and it's kind of, it grows up into our nature. It grows up. We grow up with that. So nobody wants to confess. Nobody wants to say what's wrong, what they've done, uh, admit uh, what they did was wrong. Everybody wants to cover up and, and we cover up in different ways, you know, and in my pursuit of Jesus, I started to cover up myself with knowledge and knowledge is good. Learning is great, but I started to use it to cover up my, my sin. My, what I did was wrong. Instead of it's, it sounds simply confess, right? Instead of simply blah, confess what I did. But it, it's, it was, no, I don't need to do that. I'll just cover it up and then, you know, pretend that everything's okay. And I'll ignore that. And that thought comes around again. I'm just going to ignore it. I don't have to deal with that. And it just keeps coming back around, around, around. I think where Jesus wants to meet us is he wants to meet us in our sin. He wants to meet us when we're broken. He doesn't care really about the good, good things or great things that we think of ourselves or others think of us. 
And even when I'm at church, in any church I go to, usually most places, people don't confess, man. It's still so, um, it's just something that you don't do. It's just, you don't confess your sins. It's still taboo, I guess. It's like, who's going to? Gonna, we're looking, we're all looking for Jesus. We all want to get closer to him. We want to see his face. We want to be in heaven. What if heaven is confession? What if it's just, I'm wrong? And I think that's what the politics means. It, it means just a bunch of people who don't want to say, I'm sorry, who don't want to admit that they're wrong and actually change their behavior. Like, I'm sorry, I'm stealing and cheating and lying. And then actually not do it, you know? So, so they live their whole life chasing power, which is really to hide their sin. You know, we live our whole life trying to obtain these material possessions, trying to maintain our... Um, trying to hide our sins. When Jesus died on that cross, I, God showed me something. It represented humanity's sin paid, paid in full. But it comes with one thing that we have to do. We have to confess. Jesus says, Anyone who's ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of them. He said, I died for your sins and I never sinned. I took on the burden of sin, basically confessing to the world of sin. But you don't want to confess yours. And I think that's what it represents. It, it represents the, the person who was crucified to this, his, his right and to his left. It represents one of them was not willing to confess their sins, and one of them was. I mean, everyone who was in Jesus' close proximity, close to him, they were openly saying their sin above everyone. They didn't care about what people thought about him anymore. They're like, I want to confess this deep, dark secret in front of everyone to show my faith in God. And that's my question to you. Do you want to confess your sins to everyone to show that you believe in God's opinion about him, him you don't see, more than you believe in what you do see? You see, and Satan plays the game of our eyes. Be afraid of what you see. Don't be afraid of him you don't see. So like I said, I'm going to make this sermon about me. I've sinned, man. I'm not perfect at all. I've been corrected a lot for my sins and trying to stay away from sinning. Do I sin on a regular basis? Yes, probably sins I don't know. But if I do know them, I want to fix them and I want to make them right with God in that area of my life. By first confessing him and then turning from it and trying my best to stay away from that behavior or action or lifestyle or people even. When I was young, I don't even remember how young, I saw my first sexual explicit thing in a movie and it took me off in a different direction. Before I knew it, I was masturbating to the till most of my life. It's probably the only thing I've really been consistent at, humping my pillow for crying out loud. It makes me feel ashamed. But not when I know Jesus, that's why I can tell this to you. Because he still accepts me. He still accepted me even before and when I did those things. And I look back and I'm like, God's love is, whoa. And there's freedom in confession. And I can say that because I know the love of God. There's freedom. And I want you to confess your sins so you can have the same freedom. Who cares what people think about us? We can confess our sins and admit that we're wrong. 
We don't have to go and spend our entire life becoming some rich and famous person that hide the, our sins, to hide our wrong actions. We don't have to pretend by dressing and acting like we have a good life. When we're broken, we're all broken. We all sin. We all masturbated. We all did what was wrong. Now, I remember times that I would lie. I'd lie because I was afraid like Adam in the garden, he hid himself and his wife because they were afraid. But there's nothing to be afraid of anymore because Jesus died on the cross. Old Testament, if you sinned, yeah, they'd stone you. And we still live in an Old Testament kind of world where people will stone you if you acknowledge your sin. Women in other countries, they'd be stoned for showing themselves I think that's what it means to not really be afraid of Jesus is to con is to be able to tell the world you're not perfect and to admit your imperfection. And that's when the grace of God comes into our life. And churches since they don't do that since the pastor usually doesn't admit his or her sin, there's no grace. There's no, oh, I'm a sinner too. And that's where legalism comes in. And that's where you people in church try to be perfect and stuff. And I've done this and I'm sorry. I've been bashing people with the Bible. And I'm sorry. So my sexual thing just grew and then it grew into anime porn. And then it grew into... She male guys dressed as women with fake boobs and stuff, porn. And then it eventually took a toll. And then, man, I'm just going to say that I've been a really bad kid, guy. Just, I'm not good. Trust me, I'm not good. My past is not good. And that's just one part of my life. It, I, it became real. I, I did those things for real, too. The shame I felt when I first slept with the first tranny, it was just, I just felt so dirty. I was like, <gasps> and I was, the, I was the person who was like, who would do that? That's disgusting. And then here I am like, why would I do that? For various reasons. I'm not going to justify myself. What I am going to say is this. I've been forgiven. I am not a good person. I am not a nice person. I try to be. But even sometimes my intentions are wrong. And then I regret my supposedly good action a lot of times. I've smoked weed. I've been in fights, a lot of fights that I started. And I lost. I got, I slept with the guy's wife. I'm not going to get into that, but I did. And then I got punched in the face with a guy who was married, not the same guy, but, it, and I cut my face open right here on the left side. You're looking right side. I deserve that. And worse. Smoked weed, man. I I was drunk for years, three years or something, probably longer. Uh, it's not so much I'm ashamed of it. It's just now I am ashamed of it. It's not just to, to tell you is what I mean. I'm just trying to remember, trying to keep it to the point. <clears throat> You know, I've been mean to a lot of people and I've been just trying to cover it up. Like, no, I'm not denying it. Like, no, no, I didn't do anything wrong.
And I have all these reasons to blame people. Like, oh, they did it because of them. I did it because of my parents. I did it because of this. No, I just did it, man. In the end of the day, I chose to do that. Just like right now, I'm choosing to do this. I'm choosing to admit my wrongs in front of everyone. And whatever happens, happens. But I trust that God will use this video to convict and to help people get out of sin. Do I still struggle with pornography? Yes. To the extent that I did, no. So there is progress in my behavior. A lot, actually. Does it bother me when people live in sin? Yes. Do I want to help them? Yes. Am I always the best helper? No. People's sins, it probably pisses me off more because they're just living in sin. Like I was living in sin. And it's like, I should be able to show grace, right? Because I've been forgiven, but it's so hard because I'm like, stop doing that. Please, it's terrible. You're hurting not just yourself, you're hurting everyone around you. You know why I know? Because I did that. <laughs> Most of the times I feel like a failure. And I question God, I'm like, why do you use me, man? Why, why am I a Christian? Because I get accused even more than I did or I feel like it before I even became a Christian. Depression hits you like a mother, man. I get de I'm depressed a lot. And I'm constantly reading my Bible to get undepressed. Hopefully it works. Praying all the time. Hopefully it and I'm just like, ah, oh, maybe it's a way of covering up my sin, huh? God wants us to live guiltless, shameless. And it's shame and guilt that we've done something wrong. Is why we feel those emotions. Who doesn't want people to like them? Right? We think that, oh, if we present the best part of ourselves, people will like us. And in the world way of thinking, in the human nature of thinking, yes. But in the Christian mindset, it's actually supposed to be the opposite. It's, it's supposed to be we love you because you're broken. Yes, we love your good sides, like anyone else, hopefully. But we love you because you are broken. And that's where Jesus is like, Jeremy, I like your good sides. Don't get me wrong, but I want your brokenness. I want to make something new with all your brokenness. And if you come to me and confess those things to me, I will not only forgive you, I will heal you, and then I'll give you a new identity. I'll give you new attributes in those broken areas, new qualities, new, new behaviors in those broken areas. But it comes with repentance. It comes with saying, I'm sorry, God, saying I'm sorry to people, admitting you're wrong. Sometimes I'm in arguments with my wife. For those of you who don't know, I hit my wife. I thought I remember I stood on this side and I was like, who would ever hit a woman? They should deserve to die. They should deserve to go to jail. They should deserve just punishment and beating. And here I am hurting my wife. Shame. Feeling shame and guilt. Like, why would I do that? And then even trying to justify, I did this because of, you know, you or whatever. But in actuality, I did that. Totally wrong. I don't even, you know, looking at it from a perspective, I don't even know why my wife's married to me. With all my mistakes, and then there's every little detail I can get into, but with all my mistakes... God still loves me. Like, why would you love me? Like, I'm, when you get to see yourself 
in God's perspective, you see all your sin laid out right before him. But then you see and feel the grace also laid out right before him. Right next to you, Jesus. You still accept me? I've been rejected by so many people. And I think that's why God chooses people who are broken. We're all broken, first off. But he chooses people who are willing to admit their brokenness. To testify to the world that his love is greater than its opinion. Its opinion has no weight. And God's opinion is like a rock. Immovable. An immovable rock, if you can imagine for a second. He's like, no matter what the world says about you, I love you. I think that the difference between hell and heaven are those people who are willing to admit their sin and the people who are in hell are those people who aren't willing to admit their sin. I think that's the only difference. People who are in heaven know they don't deserve to be in heaven and people who are in hell think they deserve to be in heaven. Or I heard it this way. People who are in heaven know they don't deserve to be in heaven. People who are in hell think they don't deserve to be here. Both are, both are saying they don't deserve to be there. People who are in hell are saying they don't deserve to be there. And people who are in heaven are saying they don't deserve to be there. The people in heaven have repented. The people in hell have not. And they're crying out, I don't deserve to be here. I didn't do anything wrong. And the people who are in heaven are saying, I don't deserve to be here. I did everything wrong. I think that's the difference between people who go to church and people who don't. And what I mean by that, not just go into a building. I don't mean that. I, I mean, because people go to the building and they just show up at like, oh, what's going on here? And then they never show up or they show up a few times. Or you can tell that they don't have a real relationship with Jesus or he hasn't came to life. They just want to do something on Sunday. I don't, I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about people who are actually like part of the church body of Christ confessing their sins. You can go to a church, most churches, non-denominational, just Jesus believing. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about Catholics. I'm not talking about Mormons. I'm not talking about Jehovah's Witness. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about just straight up real Jesus, holy Bible believing. You can go in there, confess your sin, usually, and they'll just be like, oh, and tell you about their sin. Oh, I, I sin too, you know? You can't tell that to anybody in this world, man, outside the church. You go to someone and be like, I could, I've made sin. I've sinned. I've done wrong. I've made sin. <laughs> Anyways, you can do that in the world. People are like, shame you. Oh, shame on you. Or give you that look. Or just be like, ew. And walk away from you and treat you like crap. In some way. They won't look at you the same. Go to someone in the church to be like, oh. I don't care about your sin. Oh, yeah, you've done wrong. Did you change? Did you learn from your behaviors? Cool. Not a problem. Let's love each other and just continue to move on in life. People in the world, they just got this veil. They got these covers. They just like try to act, walk perfect and stuff. And, and they're the ones usually accusing people in the church saying, oh, people in church pretend that they're perfect and stuff. That's why I don't like going to church. I don't like going to church because they're pretending to be perfect and they're not perfect. When they're doing the complete opposite, they're confessing their sins. They're saying their wrong actions. They're con correcting their wrong actions and living according to holiness, according to the Bible. They're not even, they're not even usually, they, yes, they are accusing people. We are human beings, but not all the time. Most of the times we're confessing our sin, we're admitting we're wrong and we're changing our behavior and walking according to how God wants us to walk, which is not in sin. 
we're, we're rarely even talking about the world because we're having a pretty good time just enjoying each other's company without alcohol, without any of those things, drugs. Not bragging. We're just being children. We're just like, oh, in the presence of God to be a child, child again. But people outside the church, they're usually like, yeah, yeah, hate people in the church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, we're not even talking about you in the first place. Rarely. If it is, it's because we were dealing with something and struggling just like anyone else with something. But instead of accusing, we're just admitting our sins. People on the outside of the church, they're just accusing each other for anything, everything. Now it's jokes. It's like, ah, rah, 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 rah. and I'm like, <sighs> and it hurts. It does. Everything that comes out of the mouth hurts. Yeah, I talk about people behind their back. It hurts, man. It not only just hurts them, it hurts me. I feel it. My spirit's like, man, don't talk about that person. But I do it. You do it too. We all do it. You know, I treat people like I'm best friends with them in the public, but then, or in front of them, but then behind them, I'm like, oh, I hate that person. Oh, they're just so, uh. My prayer to today was just this morning was just to to live my life in repentance man to always repent every day to analyze myself and go okay here's the holy word of god what have i fallen short on and admit my sin and try to my best to pay attention next time to not do that people in heaven are saying they don't deserve to be there because they couldn't earn the grace of God. And people who are in hell are saying they don't deserve to be there because they think they can earn or they think they're perfect. I'm not perfect, man. Far from it. But I'm loved by a perfect God. And I'm not ashamed of him. And I'm not a, ashamed of my sin. Because I've been forgiven from it. And I want you to experience the same thing. So I'm going to just close in a prayer. Please join me. I know you need it. Thank you, Lord for your grace, undeserved, merciful, loving, faithful grace. We couldn't deserve it. We don't deserve it. Let us be in heaven with a heavenly mindset. I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. I've committed Sins against your holy commandments, perfect laws. And I'm sorry. I've worshipped idols. I haven't put you first. I've made images. And I've worshipped them. I've treated my parents within, without respect. I've lied. I've cheated. I've stolen. I've killed people with my tongue. I've desired things I shouldn't have. I've desired people's spouses. I've desired people who aren't my wife, whether I'm married or not. I pray that you would forgive me of my sins. I pray that I would repent and say I'm sorry to you every day. And by showing my faith that I am sorry, I'm going to turn from my sin and try my best not to go back into them and to show my faith i'm going to confess in front of the entire world everyone of my sin to show that your grace is more important that you're more real when the world doesn't see you i see you by my faith i'm sorry god for everything i've done i'm sorry 
for everything. Show me and lead me into the path of everlasting life. Every person Jesus healed openly confessed their sins. Openly. Openly. In front of everyone. That's my challenge to you. Openly confess. Try it. Most people aren't doing that. Just think of something that you already know, that you've done. Go to the person and just say, I'm sorry. And explain why you're sorry. And don't justify and shift it. I did this because of that. Just say, you know, I did this because I was wrong. And I'm sorry. I don't want to have a political debate or religious debate. That's what religion is. That's what politics is. It's just trying to find a way to reason why you did something wrong. Instead of simply saying, I'm sorry. Don't take the prideful route because you'll never see the end of it. Take the humble one and be set free. God bless.